Hello everyone, I'm DMind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of Lauren the Amazon Princess. So, in the last episode, yeah, the elves and humans waged war because of Grop's illusion magic, and yeah, we managed to make peace with, with the elves and the humans so far. And now we're gonna go up against, yeah, we're trying to recruit members. And fight the demons. So training with Breja, hmm. I wanna work in the shop anyways. Not see anything for me. This bow shots, this bow shots. Yeah damn. Our equipment shots here. Yep, nothing much here. So let's use shop. I wonder what training Breja does. Ready to train with me and my goblin slaves? I won't go easy, I'm warning you. Oh, let's see, check the castle. Commander Breja, you have served the Citadel well, I assume. I am overjoyed at your return, your majesty. That's a very different attitude from before. Breja sputtered in anger. What do you mean, Sharon? She is quick to label you as dead and pass the crown to Lauren. Karen and Breja looked at each other for a moment until Breja looked at the ground. I am sure Breja had her reasons and, thus, and they were wise ones. You honor me. Sharon still felt uneasy with Breja, even though Karen had no issue with her. Alright. I want to change my party setup. Hmm. I think I'd rather have the wall in front, stronger. I prefer the wall over grey. So we are. Let's save? Nah, no, I already saved. Yeah, so let's leave, I guess? Oh, yeah. So guys, I want to recruit Chambara, yeah. She's powerful to have. Lauren and Sharon led the party through the murky waters of the unforgiving swamps. Why have- why we come back here again? My nose is about to fall off from the blasted stench. For the last time, Dwarf, to seek out the shapeshifter. A wet dwarf isn't exactly perfume either. They wound up in front of Chambara's hut for the second time. Just like before, it showed no signs of being lived in. I'll go first. Sharon knocked on the door but no one answered. Eventually he pushed it open. The inside was just as luxurious as when they at last found it, but Chamba was nowhere in sight. Let me guess, a giant scorpion or spider walks out this time. Where is she? Has she shape shift again? Chamba, we are friends, we just come came to talk. Everyone was silent as they eyed every insect and chair, candlestick and candlestick for any signs of the witch, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Which are you here? Maybe she actually isn't here this time. There was still no response from anything. The continuing silence proved that indeed the house was empty. The party had no other way of contacting her. This was a waste of time, let's go. The party piled out of the house and back into the muggy swamp. Hold on, there are two sets of footprints going off in that direction. Ray pointed out the tracks on the ground where the party had not walked. But who is the second person? Lauren put out his sword and followed the footsteps. Let's find out. As they hunted for signs of Chambara, they picked up the scent of a campfire and followed it deep into the marsh. After some time, they finally found a campsite ahead in the trees. They could hear, they could even hear a voice. Now, now, be nice, sugar. Some kind of cowboy guy? There was a man clad in unusual clothing, and an, an enormous sword swung across his back. They crept close and sat as silently as they could. He appeared to be tending to a pet snake in the cage, but the snake was hissing at him. That's Chambara, right? You're gonna have to do you're gonna have to do better than that to scare me. The snake morphed into a giant scorpion. They instantly knew that it was Chambara and that this man had captured her. Oh you're a witch hunter. You've already done that one. Taste this. Use your imagination. She could just teleport, right? The visit, the visit of Chambara finally appeared. She pounced onto the cage bars in anger. When I get out, I'm going to scratch that smile off your face. By then, Lauren was directly behind the man with a sword near his neck. Let her go. He turned around lazily, looked Lauren up and down, and then adjusted his hat. Lose your way, gorgeous. Lauren made an inhuman sound. Sharon quickly stepped up to her side. I wonder what kind of inhuman sound she made. 
You're in possession of our friend and you will let her go now. I can get out of here on my own. Go away, please. Quiet, shapeshifter. You will accept our help and like it. <laughs> yeah, you will accept it and you will like it. Whoa, no. This wily thing is mine. I capture a fan square. She wouldn't hurt no one. Let her go. Her tights are a crime against nature. I'm just doing everyone a favor. So why don't you just turn around and head on home? Everyone spread out and surrounded the witch hunter. After a brief staring contest, he realized that he was considerably outnumbered. So that's how it's going to be, huh? Just my luck. He looked back at the cage and winked at Shambara. Don't worry, honey. We'll meet again. Shambara heaved to emphasize how disgusted she was. But the man took no notice and found his way quickly out of the campsite. He disappeared into the dark of the swamps. They moved to free Chambara from her cage, but before they could reach it, she slipped out from the cage by herself. Lauren and Sam blinked in surprise. Why were you in that cage if you could have escaped any time you wanted? I told you guys to leave me alone. I had it under control. It didn't look like everything was going according to your plan on our side. I think people think they have power over you when they don't. It's the best trick in the book. Keeps them from finding out your real weakness. It's over now. Who is that man and why did he have you locked up? You're joking, right? He's obviously a witch hunter. And a particularly revolting one at that. This one's been after me for years. So boring. Riven is his name. Forget him. Why are you here? I want my swamps back. Go away. Chambara started walking away back towards his house. Come back here. We need to speak with you. She didn't even stop or even slow. So Lauren was forced to return to run after her and talk while walking. Please, I would like you to fight in my army. Nah. Lauren gritted her teeth, unsure of how to deal with such a response. People rarely refuse her much. We saved your life. She's gonna, excuse me, you saved my what? She, she's gonna say she had it under control and didn't need to be saved. The world is at war and we need you to fight. Why do I care? This war is going to affect you too. You thought the witch hunters would stop, but they clearly haven't. There's no reason for you to do nothing more. Nothing anymore. You think you have me figured out, do you? Don't forget your precious empire now is burning at the stake just as soon as any witch hunter. They would both brand her as evil, even if she accepts. We would have to face that. But she is not evil. She helped me find my mother. No, they're right. I'm evil. It does not matter what you are. You'll be dead if you do not fight. Fight with us and we will protect you. Shamba is and cross your arms. You guys are as annoying as that hunter. But we don't wish to you harm. She groaned and threw her hands out. If I have to choose between being hogged tight by that filthy lout or neck to death by you guys, I'll just have to choose the lesser evil. Good. Under one condition. Okay, what is it? You have to get rid of Raven for me. He knows where my home is and no witch hunters get to know that and just walk away. You know, like you completely let him do. We should be able to do that, mistress. Yes, we agree. Yippee. You've acquired Champara's personal quest. Stop Raven. Defeat the witch hunter Raven in Lot in Lotark. Convince. Alright. Champara begrudgingly joined the group as they left the swamps. Lauren promised that she would be protected from anyone who sought to hurt her, even allies. Her magic would prove too useful and her knowledge too vital, as the best way to fight an enemy is to know all about them. Yep. I want to change my party setup if I could. Lotark. Yeah, let's go there. In Lotark, they did not have to look far for their witch hunter. Numerous people were able to point the party in the direction of Raven's whereabouts. He is currently staying at the local inn and tavern. He's a popular fellow. Chambara snorted. If he's in this tavern, should we strike him down? Sure. I don't think that is wise. We, we are likely to just end up in jail. Whatever, have it your way, so long as he eventually dies. Killing isn't the only way to solve your problems. That rat isn't going to leave me alone as long as his heart beats. Maybe we can talk him out of hunting you all together. That's impossible. But if we could? We're wasting time. Look, I'll transform into something small so that I can follow you. But once we're in there, I can't help you. So don't screw this up. Chamba 
instantly reduce in size and transform into a black cat. Oh, she's so cute now. Jacko bent down to pet the cat, but it hits at him. Yikes. Still moody though. Leave her alone and let's go. I think I hear him already. Lauren led the group into the cat tavern next to them. Next to them, the cat weaved in between their legs, hopped up on the table and inconspicuously stared licking its fur. There. Sharon pointed across the room to boy to boisterous men to the boisterous man dressed in the same peculiar clothes that they had found in the swamp. Hey, what do I got to do to get some service in this rotted place? He slammed his tankard on the table with a loud thud. The barmaid scurried over to get it, but when she turned to refill it, Raven sm smacked her on her rear. She squealed and tossed his drink back at him. He shot up. Watch it. He shook his head before placing it on his head. Blast, wench. Almost ruined my hat. Lauren's hands tightened on her shorts, but Sam hoped that she wouldn't attack. Not here. Not in here. No one can take a compliment these days. Think fast. He flipped up a golden coin at the insulted barmaid. It bounced off on, off of her and to the floor. Raven headed to the door, causing the party members to suddenly act like patrons and hide their faces. The witch hunter thankfully passed them without noticing. Come on, we have to follow him. They followed Raven in secret as he travelled through the city. He threw a lazy greetings at people as he passed and tipped his hat to especially beautiful women. So far, they were successfully undetected. He then left the city entirely and walked up into the nearby woods, speaking their interests. Perhaps he had a campsite he was returning to. Or he's just leading you because he knows you're following him. After quietly sneaking behind him far into the area, he stopped and adjusted his head. Alright, now that we're out of the city, it's time that you explain to me why you're tailing me. Sharon sucked in a breath so he knew all along he was being followed. Lawrence stepped out of hiding first and confronted him. Raven casually turned around looking slightly amused. We're here to stop your hunt on the witch, Chambara. Oh yeah? What's in it for you? She... she here right now? Where is it why is she this time, crow? Enough chatter. Lauren took out shorts but Sharon rushed forwards. We won't kill you if you promise to give up witch hunting. That's adorable. No sure, no way. I'm not that much of a pushover. Sharon's side still fixed on finding a peaceful solution. Even though his patience was already then thin, there had to be a way to reason with him. I don't understand. Why do you want to hunt witches? Because they're evil. It's the same reason you hunt down demons without a second thought. Bad things deserve to be punished. It's the decent thing to do. Saren didn't believe him. Raven thought himself above decency back in the tavern. So there had to be another reason. Let's save. Uh, uh, here. So it's either fame, fortune, or blood. Let's try blood. You crave battle. You can't sit in one place for too long and you need something to occupy your time. So you picked up witch hunting as a hobby and Chamba has been a thrilling case. Am I right? Well, well, looks like we got a storyteller on our hands. You don't know anything about who I am, so don't so why even try? We know enough. We watched you at the tavern. You were very rude. You must not have been looking at me then. Do you bother women so often, women? What inferno are you talking about? Boy, you better check yourself. There had to be more to it. Mother issues, selfishness, bad relationships. Oh, come on. Let's try bad relationships. Did a woman joke you in the past? A lover betray you with another? Or maybe you never had a woman ever truly love you at all? Raven's eyes widened as he frowned. Why are you asking all these bl blasted questions? You think I'm just going to give up my career because you asked me? You deserve better. Forget hunting. Why have your life revolved around murder and death? You could do so much more with your life. Murder and death? That sounds like an alright time. Boys! Heavily armed men stepped out from behind the trees with crooked grins on their faces. It's gonna be a pity killing such fine looking people, but well, that's just how the story goes. First you, then the shapeshifter. All in the day's work. Lauren gladly rushed into battle. Oh, could I have convinced him? Let me save the game. Here. Alright. 
Hmm, I, I don't have Chumba with me. Alright, I'll take this. I wonder if I could have convinced him. Yeah, let's try that. Fame, fortune, fame. You're only hunting for glory. Maybe you didn't get enough attention as a child, but you actually need to be the center of attention. Everyone in town knew you and that's why and that's the way you like it, am I right? Um same thing. Mother shoes. Did your mother mistreat you as a child? Do you feel the need to take that vengeance out of whoever you meet? Then gonna care. Shamba is naive. Boys, okay, same thing. I don't think I could convince him. Maybe I could. Maybe, but whatever the case. Oh, the, the music change. Alright, so you got Elf, Dark Elf Scout, and Bagat. Alright, let's try to take out the Dark Elf back. Doesn't matter, Draco can burn you all. Hmm. Yeah, no kiki. Yeah, damage is terrible. I see. Yep, I'm fine with this. Like you. Yep, let's kill him off. Oh, he's still alive. I thought he would have died. Alright. Um, your turn. You do so little damage, and you missed. All right. Let's try to do that. I should finish this guy off. Oh no. Um. I should wait for Sharon's turn, right? I did not know this. Um, Draco. Alright. I'm gonna advise you. Aw, you care. You really do. Alright. Now let's finish them off. Let's move on. Okay, got standard board choice, Ravens, Bandana, and Mithis, and the Whitney. Alright. And go. Oh, yeah. We're going level up. No skill points. I mean, yeah. All oh, into strength, eh? Alright. Ah, blasted. Raven clutched his chest and he fell to the ground. His head rolled off of him and his body still. Stop, Raven. And I leveled up. And Dora leveled up. No skill points. I'll take it. Dora. Alright. Done. He's been dealt with. Now to tell Chem I kept his next to Lauren. Why are you his? When she looked down, the cat transformed into Chambara. Finally! That could not have taken any longer. I'm sorry, but I thought we could talk him out of it. Uh huh. Good going. Chambara's eyes had shifted from being hostile to invasive as they roamed Sharon's body. He shifted uncomfortably. We've kept our deal. You'll fight alongside us now, correct? She crossed her arms and sighed. Only for a little while. The swamps will devour my home if I'm not back. If I'm not back soon. After Fox is defeated, you may do as you wish. Hey, you got a mage necromancer. Let's see. Hit your full row of enemy dark magic. Okay, 15% chance you're calling poison. A full row of earth damage. Nah. Hit your full row of air damage, a full row of water damage, fire damage. Nah, I prefer silver. Yep. And we can take cure, I think. Yeah, let's take cure. What's this? Clear target speed for 30. Okay. Wow, so much will. Um, I think just a bit on strengthen skill. 
Shambhala stepped into the ranks of Lon Xiaomi, now a full member of the party. She would always remind them of her desire to be back home, but she never failed to do her part. As she spent more time with the group, her realization of the situation grew and she showed her willingness to help, even if she had to mask it. Yay, now we completely have um, Shambhala. Let's go back to the citadel and change party setup. Sorry though, but Shambhala is just better. No, in fact, I want, I'd rather take Dora in French. I think she deals more damage anyways. Alright, please. So what next? I don't know when you go to Chamba's heart. Wait, now can I stay? No. Chamba will her eyes. Lol. <laughs> um, who else can we? Oh yeah, there is... There is Meshfit, right? Let's see for game. Yep, yeah. Um, the Dark Elves? Uh, let's... Skip. In the Dark Elf Village, the group was quickly intercepted by Tobar. Traveler, you've turned. I forgot to do his voice. I think it's just the old man voice like, um, that archmage. Yes, it's something the matter. He searched Long's eyes and then frowned. So you have not come with news. What were you expecting? My son, Meshrit. He's missing. Excellent. Looks like I'll be hunting him once more. Now we see who is really the monster between us. And that he would be completely under control? He's clearly not, I'm afraid. Please do not kill him, I beg you. He's a good boy. That's a laugh. You have a weird sense of humor. I cannot excuse Meshit's crime of dealing with demons, but he's not in league with them. He was driven to this. He told me how he felt trapped and powerless over our situation in the desert. He only wanted to help. I thought that you all had come to announce his death, but... If he's still alive, you must return him to me, please. I know only that he was speaking of the Cyclops before he managed to escape my guardsmen. Before he... He's not an evil person. The demon inside of him. That is not Meshrit. That is not my son. We understand, but know that if he is dangerous, then he will be treated with the same hospitality that I give to any demon. Tobias' eyes darken with the possibility. I suppose now there is some hope that he may still live rather than none. I'll try shit in time that you are gone. Find Meshwit. Lauren led the group out of the desert with the new goal of finding Meshwit. Alright. Cyclops. Oh yeah, he was here. Let's go there. The party traveled to the last known hunting grounds of the Cyclo Cyclops. Using race tracking skill and his thorough knowledge of Meshwit, um, they were able to confirm exactly where he was headed. They, want, they wandered into a canyon and stopped when they saw a threatening cyclops in the distance. It was too late to leave unnoticed. The monster stood up and looked right at them. I don't like this at all. We slain many like them. Oh, he's big. But even Lauren's courage faltered as she felt the ground shake with each step of the cyclops. As he advanced to his party. Be careful. The cyclops suddenly charged at the party with an aggressive roar. And then a, might, a mighty a roar stopped the Cyclops in its tracks. I looked around in confusion. Meshrit? A beast sprang out from nowhere and attacked the Cyclops. The whole party stumbled backwards. The Cyclops whined in pain and ran in the opposite direction. His attacker did not chase him. Whoa, Meshrit, you look badass! By the moon! Sean slowly recognized the unusual demon to be Meshrit, but he looked very different. Alright, we found him. He suddenly faced the party, demonic eyes pulsing, fang teeth bared, and dripping blood from his recent attack. Gotcha. Ray Cook cocked his crossbow and aimed it right for the Dark Elf's head. Xiang sheathed his sword and rushed towards Mephishit. Move, you're in my shot! But he did not stop and confronted the demon, the demonic elf entirely. I think that's what he said. He growled at him in a mixture of primal instinct and recognition. Xiang punched Mephishit directly in the face. The entire group gasped at Meshrit reared back with a snap of his teeth. What's wrong with you? Your father thinks you're dead. You think you keep breaking his heart and ruining everything the Dark Elves are fighting for. You heard your own brothers escaping your isolation and for what? You're just roaming around out here? I think it's time you stop being so selfish. Meshrit breathing unfurled in low gauze as he scowled at Saren and his words. Lauren was on edge, afraid of a for a companion's life. Oh, he transformed back. 
Slowly, the dark elf's breathing and form both return to normal. The color of his eyes return and his beastly features subsided. He was finally only looking at Saren with a hard gaze. There, that's better. A hand on Saren's arm put his, him away from Mestrit. Lauren's heart was shining brightly against Mestrit's skin as she simultaneously threatened him with it and eased Saren away. Your terror ends now. Mestrit was suddenly very afraid of the shadow of Lauren's ancient sword. You've made up your mind then. We kill him? He is a demon, we all saw that. But he's not a demon, he's only a dark elf who has been corrupted. Which was his own choice. Which was his own choice, mind you. He asked for this. No. Everyone was start to hear his normal voice. I didn't ask for this. Do you have some sort of demon disease? Ah, are you contagious? She said I would be given power and I had no ability to say no. Lauren's short shook as if she wanted to believe him but she was still torn. He's a demon. He was not born in Everburn. Only part he's not born in Everburn. Only part of him is corrupted, and a part that can obviously be tamed. Karen looked over at Sharon with interest. Do not speak of me as if I am not here. You won't be here. Your life is in our hands, if you've forgotten. Mashwick's breathing start start to quicken in response to the trap. Lauren, no. Lower your sword and spam the demon inside of him. Sharon wanted to see if Mestrit could reject his demon side, demon side, because if he could, then he could be redeemed. Mestrit stared at the mall for a long moment, the entire group waited on edge to see which form he would take. But he, silent, but he suddenly bolted away from them. He ran across the sands to escape. I got him! We shot at him, but Mestrit was running with demon speed. They attempted to catch up with him, it was only a matter of time before they lost him completely. The party slowed to a halt and caught their breath. I will not stand his games anymore. Not as easy as he looks, is it? He has an unfair advantage. We need to hunt him down. Sharon heard something to his side. It could have easily been an animal, but his intuition hit something more. With the party in deep confusion, he crept slowly towards the large rocks nearby. The rustling was heard again, so he darted behind the boulders. Mesh fit? Sharon was suddenly dragged down to the ground and his mouth covered. Am I demon or am I elf? Mestrit's voice was hoarse and his hands were shaking. Yet when found, Sharon found his eyes, they were sharp as, his, as swords. Sharon pried his hands from his mouth and matched those eyes then. I see an elf. He seemed so calm. He seemed to calm. They stared at each other, the hot sands burning their skin. Finally, he looked down. The tent to an arrow stuck in his leg. He ripped it from his skin without a second thought. Stop. Let me. Sharon used his healing magic on Mestrit and the arrow won't close. After it was turned to, they were enveloped by silence again. It was clear that Mestrit could easily escape again and, and would. I can't let you leave. Then kill me. Sharon swallowed. No. Without being threatened, his, de his demon side was not claiming him and he seemed to completely... and he seemed so com completely normal. At least so much... as much as any troubled soul could be. It did not feel like the right thing to do to kill him, not when a loved one so dearly wanted him home. You will go back to Toba and you will do as he says. Not yet. Why not? I am not done. Done with what? Xiang could hear his name being called, now that they noticed he was gone. I must kill him. I must have his head. Well, He has Xiang in hostage. Lauren and the rest of the members crowded around the rocks. Amu Amukiki subdued and helped Mashrit while Ray kept him in check with his map crossbow. No, wait! Mashrit got out, tempting his, demons, his demon instincts. Put away your weapons, his demon blood is triggered from self-preservation. Don't threaten him. Are you still negotiating with this filth? We have decided to kill him. I think that's what I I didn't click too fast. He said he will go back to Toba if he doesn't one thing first, right? Tell him, Mashrit. Amukiki gripped Lucien so that he could talk. Jump Jack, let me kill him, and I'll return to the desert. Who the blast is- Who the blast is Jump Jack? Forgot Ramesh ever existed. Whoa, that double-headed ogre? The what? The Ethan that's been eating all the caravans lately. That's a juicy bounty on him. But why would he wish to claim the bounty? It has no effect on the else. Tell us. They all looked to Meshrit for an answer. Sport. 
That was all he said and it took everyone a long time to push that shit. You mean you're hunting him for fun? Not for fun, because he needs to. When the demon decides on taking blood, they must have it. Oh. I wonder what happened if Shambhala was not, was not with us. This is slightly the demon's blood to blame. If we help you kill Dromjack, you'll be satisfied. You'll see your father. Mastrid nodded with effort. But I bet the gold would be really good if we get the bounty. We should kill Mashfit, but still go hunt the Athen anyway. It sounds interesting. Quiet. No. Toba asks us for a son, not a corpse. We'll do what he wants and then take him back where he belongs. Quiet Mashfit as personal guest. Alright. Sharon was relieved that his mistress had made such a compassionate decision. Secretly, Mashfit would be too. The Dark Elf was kept under high guard. Sharon shared responsibility with Ray to keep him in check. With the promise to hunt down Dromjack, Mashrit was obedient in the hopes to finally quench his bloodlust. Alright! Oh no! Um, let's go to the Hilda and change our party map setup. Oh, I don't have him. Alright. He's not in my party. Then let's save the game. And here. Alright, but that's it for this episode. So, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again next time.